Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I oh, know that's not for me. Hello and welcome to Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. And tonight I've only got one guest. Now, I know every week I say how exciting this show's going to be, but this week I actually mean it. <laughs> it's great. For the first time ever, I won't just ask the questions. I might even listen to some of the answers. <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows who my very special guest is, except it seems my house band, Four Puffs and a Piano. Didn't you get the memo, lads? <laughs> you look like bridesmaids at a whole wedding. <laughs> For God's sake. On the end there, would I really be doing an hour-long Pat Butcher special? <laughs> hey? And Butch Cassidy at the piano there, look. That's not your costume, that's day wear for you, isn't it? I know. As for the other two, well, at least we'll stop getting letters asking whether or not you're really gay. <laughs> <laughs> Which we do get, by the way. <laughs> Pass them on. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, lads, I know you've been rehearsing this particular routine all week, uh, so we're looking forward to it. And no pressure, but the world's number one gay icon is watching you perform. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see what you've got. Ladies and gentlemen, four very excited puffs and a piano. <laughs> Second best baby Put your love to the test As we are living in a material world And I am a material Music makes the people come together Like a virgin Touched for the very first time It would be, it would be, it would be so nice
I'm sensing that some of you, my frisked and vetted friends, don't believe that I've managed to get Madonna on my show tonight, so let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look in the green room. Christ, she's here! She's here! She's wearing a ballet because she knows I love the French. Uh, now, before we chat to Madonna, though, uh, and we, we'll get you in just a second, before we chat to Madonna, there's an issue I must address, an important issue. There are some asylum seekers to Britain who I welcome, like Madonna, for example. <laughs> you can stay as long as you like, my little cockney spower. However, one gentleman this week has clearly outstayed his welcome. I am talking about Frenchman David, David, not good enough for him, obviously, David Ginella. Do you want to know what this garlic chewing, galois reeking, flannel dodging, Iraq appeasing shampoo salesman and part time footballer has said this week? <laughs> he said that British women, and Mrs. Ritchie, I'm including you in this now, he said British women are shameless drunks. <laughs> My wife read this over breakfast, she nearly choked on her Bacardi Breezer. <laughs> and there's more. He says British women behave like men in sex as well as drink. I, what's he talking about? I've never slept with a British girl who reached orgasm, rolled off, let rip, then turned on the Grand Prix. <laughs> what was the pity? And then the final insult, he says he doesn't want to bring his children up here as he doesn't want his daughter to be an unsophisticated English woman. Well, David, if I may borrow an old saying, which I believe is uh, West Country in origin and popularised by W.H. Auden, go f*** yourself, Frenchie. <laughs> Should, uh, should we get Madonna out, ladies and gentlemen? Before we do, <laughs> this isn't the first time I've met my special guest. Back in 1992, we had an encounter, and I think there was chemistry then. <laughs> and sure enough, she's rushed back for a second helping of wash just 11 <laughs> short years later. <laughs> Before she comes out, let's just remind ourselves of, of who she is and what she's done. Have a look at this.
tried to be a girl, I tried to be a mess, I tried to be the best. I guess I did it wrong, that's why I wrote this song. This type of modern life is it for me? This type of modern life is it for free? So, I went into a bar Looking for sympathy A little company I tried to find a friend It's more easily said It's always been the same This type of modern life Is it for me? This type of modern life Is it for free? I tried to stay on top I tried to play the part But somehow I forgot Just what I did it for And why I wanted more This type of modern life Is it for me? This type of modern life Is it for me? Do I have to change my name? When it gets me far Should I lose some weight? A Jew. I'm just living out the American dream and I just realized that nothing is what it seems.
Shine your light now Station, change your channel, check it out. I was told that I was supposed to do an old song, so... How far back do you want me to go? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I know what I'm gonna do. No, the, no I'm, I'm never asking an audience that question again, because the last time I said it, they asked me to do Like a Virgin, and I forgot the words. <laughs> it's what happens when you've been writing songs for 20 years, you just forget everything. When you're old, like me. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to tell you, I'm just going to do it.
but don't leave me where I lay down. Tell me love isn't true, it's just something Something that we do Tell me everything I'm not for Don't ever tell me to stop Don't you ever tell me Love isn't true It's just something that we do Don't you ever tell me Everything I'm not for
Um, thank you so much. Thank you. That was fantastic. Was it? It was great. Well, you're not, you, you must have been happy. No, I'm a bit critical of myself right now. Yeah. No, it was great. Thank Trust you. Me. And they loved it. And I know, you know, they're... Because <laughs> so I know you thought... You thought everyone was being quiet. I think we're just being respectful because we like to listen and we're just, I think, I'm speaking for everyone here saying we're also knocked out that we've got like a private concert going on here. And then, you know, so we're, we're just enjoying every second and coming to get to memory. That's oh, what's going you. on there. Thank you. And congratulations on the album uh, mm. because that's gone to number one as well, I believe. <laughs> Which is your eighth number one album. Is it? Yeah, it's, in this country, it's your eighth number one album, I believe. Well, it might be your ninth. Anyway, you've had a lot. I, Who's counting? I am counting. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know what I want to say is uh, I'm delighted that you've chosen a superior culture to make your home in. Yes, but I'm delighted too, but well, I I'm not delighted that people keep writing that I don't like being here. Well, we read about every three or six months or so, you, you see some of the papers saying Madonna says she doesn't like the hospital, she doesn't like the school, she doesn't like the air, she doesn't like the location, she wants the country towed slightly further to the south. <laughs> and well, well, excuse me, why did I buy so many houses here then? Exactly. <laughs> And according to the newspapers, I think I've bought about 20 houses here. And uh, how many do you actually have? Two. Two. Well, you see, then they're making that up as well. Exactly. I bet they're both very nice houses, though. They're very nice, yeah. Um, they're not too nice. No. They're not, you know... Just oh, nice <laughs> enough. We're not saying you're showy. Yeah, good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but you know, whose decision was it to move over here? Because this is when you got married to uh, Mr. Guy Ritchie, of course. Yes. Um, you lowered your voice when you said that. Is that the kind of deal My you have? <laughs> Guy Ritchie. God. Well, Guy Ritchie. <laughs> we we all know, you know. He's asked me when I'm in public, when I say his name, <laughs> if I just keep my voice down, you know. <laughs> well, now, now, was this your decision, though, or did, did he want UK and you wanted LA, or were you both decided uh, to, well, to, to stay here? To tell you the truth, when I first moved here, I was a bit grumpy about it. Because I, you know... I thought, this isn't fair. Where's the compromise here? I've moved to England. Yeah. Um, and then I just really fell in love with it. And, you know, I've figured out how to drive on the wrong side of the road. And, <laughs> and I learned to love ale. And <laughs> yeah, well, you look like someone who drinks a lot of ale. I, I do. I do, actually. Now, do you? You, <clears throat> like a, you like a beer? I love ale. I bet you, but you Timothy do... Taylor, it's the best. Yeah, you drink real ale. Real ale. You should join camera. Who's that? That's the campaign for real ale. I'm sure they would be quite happy to have you as this campaign. Really? Do they pay well? Well, they don't pay, but, but normally you get to lead, meet a lot of overweight men in jumpers with beards. <laughs> I don't know how much of Oh, I didn't finish my story. See, what happens is, so then I move over here and I really fall in love with it. And then my husband decides he wants to make a movie in America. So now I'm, I'm over there grumping about the fact that I'm not over here. So more, really, so. It's a, basically, you're just very difficult to please. Yeah. <laughs> well, poor old <laughs> Um, well, I might talk about that a bit later, if I may, but uh, do you think the, the people in America, do they feel slighted that, you know, because you, you are the biggest female recording star, well, ever, actually. I mean, you know, it's the truth. <laughs> And I suspect, I don't think anyone will come along and, and ever take that away from you. Um, so to, to, to move from America, I would mm -hmm. imagine if I was in America, I'd feel a little bit, as you would say, pissed. <laughs> or as you would have used to say, now you'd say something else. Um, have the hump? Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> 11 um, years, she didn't return one call <laughs> and that and that. Five minutes in, we're on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, what, what were you just saying? Well, no. do, you, do, you think, <laughs> uh, do you think they feel slighted at oh, all? Oh, slighted. Um, whatever. They're always, they're always bitching about me anyways. Who cares?
drive, you drive, don't you? You drive yourself around sometimes. I've seen you, a photograph of you in a little Mini Cooper. Yeah. yeah which is yeah. a lovely car. It's a great car. I um, love it. Have you paid the congestion charge yet? Do you think it's going to sort problems out here in London? <laughs> well, I'm kind of pissed off because, you know, I live in the area... You know, I live in the area where you're not supposed to have to pay. Okay, well, you know, you pay a little bit. But now you? I have to pay yeah. because I don't have a listed phone number. And you have to prove to the, um, to the, um, whatever, the city or the mayor. Red mayor, Ken. Red Ken, yeah, yeah. him. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with him because I, I don't want to have a listed phone number. And if I don't have a listed phone number, then I have to pay the fee to, to come to my house every day. And let's face it, five pound a day, I mean, that's going to take that's a dent. Really <laughs> Because you're what, 230 it's, million or something I read last week? I mean, you know, it principle. all adds up. It's, it's the principle. I agree with you, though, and the principle is wrong. And let's, let's you and I get together and maybe try and do something about it. Okay. Well, right, that's all it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me ask you, you know, when, when someone is as remarkably famous you, as you are and, and has been indeed for a long time, I think we, you know, people tend to forget that you have a regular life and you're just a, a regular person mm -hmm. for much of the time. What's a, what's a normal good day for you? A normal good day? Yeah, a good day for you. What would be at the end of the day you say, you know, that was a nice day, I enjoyed that? Mm. Well, I have to have slept well the night before. Yeah. Um, my children have ha had to have gotten through the day without slapping each other. Um, uh, Does that I have to have gotten I mean, through the day um, and not sort of been bummed out when I looked at myself in the mirror. Now, you see, <laughs> you see this, uh, people, I think, I, I would find that hard to understand that you would look in the mirror and feel bummed out. Because, mm. you know, I don't know if you know this, but, but you're a Madonna. that's how I am. So what? <laughs> that, but I'm still a person. But when you... So what do you not like about your appearance on a, on a bad oh, day? Let's not get into it. Let's, let's talk about the positive things. Okay. So, so those things not having happened would be a good day. And then also um, a day where I um, did something I really like to do. <laughs> And I was kind of hoping be... for a bit more detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, what, what do you but like I doing? Mean, um, do you like do you like to do you like to potter around exciting. the house? It does sound Potter around the house. Yeah, do you like to potter? You know? <laughs> um, you know, just move things around a bit. I like. <laughs> I like to go to the park and feed the ducks. Do you do any housework at all? Oh. Are you familiar I with the phrase <laughs> housework? Uh, no, I, I've, I've, uh, I've rinsed out a few dishes and, okay. um, and I've, I've put some wash in the washing machine. Okay. You know what? <laughs> no, and I've made my bed. On Sundays, the housekeeper doesn't come in and I, do, I make my bed. That's good. That's good. I, I, um, do, you ever, do you ever iron? No. Do you cook? No. That's Guy Ritchie's job. So Guy, you, you never... He's, he cooks. I, I, I hear he's rather good. He's, he's good, yeah. What does he cook? Mm, he's really good with... Uh, uh... <laughs> you don't yeah. actually live with him, do you? I've actually never even <laughs> met him. <laughs> 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 He's good with fish and chicken and duck and okay. pheasant and duck those and pheasant. Of, yeah, wow. but you know, you, I get the feeling, and I've always think that you probably don't scrambled eat, eggs. But you He's, don't eat that much, do you? I mean, you. I do. I love to eat. You eat a lot. Yeah, I do. But you look like you don't eat hardly at all. I didn't eat all day. Right. Just for you. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, you don't have to starve yourself for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding.
Now, here's one thing I noticed. When the album came out, when the single came out, American Life, which, which did great for you as well, mm -hmm. you rapped at the end of it. Yeah. And a lot of people thought, well, maybe this isn't your natural territory. This isn't your domain. Well, who's to say what, whose domain it is? I could only agree with you on that. But um, I know, you know, a lot of people said rap lyrics, not Madonna's territory here. I well, believe... why not? I wrote them. They're my words. I can say them. Okay. Yeah. Does it have to do with the fact that I'm not black? It's got to do with the fact, I think, that you're known for pop originally as well, I think. You know, you've had such a long career when I mean, you've had... But I'm also known for not sticking to the programme and for surprising people and yeah. changing and doing different things. I actually like the rap. Okay. You know, I'm not just saying I'm that. I'm not attacking right you. No, I know, but you were giving me what we call <laughs> stink eye attacking. then. And I was a bit... <laughs> you know? No, actually, somebody told me that, 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 that there was some criticism of my rap, but that's good. I welcome all criticism. But, you know, do you really? Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all the same. Nice things, negative things. They, you can't let any of it mean anything to you, because it doesn't matter. But you know what, I say that, but if I read something bad about myself, I hate it. Yeah, but don't read anything. Yeah, but even if I know maybe someone once wrote something. <laughs> well, no, but you have to overcome that. I don't have any newspapers in my house, I don't have any magazines, I don't read anything. So you avoid that kind of input. Do yeah. you watch TV? Do you listen to the radio? Nope. So what do you guys do? For fun. Yeah. We, um, we go to the movies. Uh -huh. uh, we read a lot of books. Oh. We talk to each other. Yeah, you see, I'm and working on that. Huh? Yeah, are you? But I've got uh, the, the rap you did on American Life here, and I wanted to run past the end because I, I, I want to know whether this is a, an actual list of what's going on in your life. Because you rapper, uh, you say, I, you know I'm satisfied. I've got a lawyer and a manager, which I assume you do have, and an agent and a chef. Yes. Okay. Three nannies, an assistant, and a driver and a jet, a trainer and a butler, and a bodyguard of five, a gardener and a stylist. Do you think I'm satisfied? Is that, do you have that number of stuff? Yes. Wow. <laughs> but but the, the point I'm trying to make is I have all those things and, I, I, and none of those things bring happiness. Made me happy. Make me happy. I get the point. I'm not stupid. It? I was oh. just checking. <laughs> it's a good yeah, rap. But I, it's, a, it's okay. I, I just sort of made a mental list of all the things I was doing at that time. I was drinking Starbucks every day, I was driving my Mini Cooper, I was doing yoga and Pilates. Yeah. And so I just tried to go through and make this mental list of all the things that are in my life. And then it's meant to be ironic because I have all these things and I do all these things and you want me to shut up now, right? No, 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 please don't. I'm trying to make a point. No, but it's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. The point is, is that material things don't bring you happiness. Yeah. And you know, the thing that uh, impresses me about you is, you know, we know you're fabulously wealthy. Okay, um, but you don't seem someone who does actually get off on, on material things particularly. I, I mean, don't. the fact, for example, you're driving a Mini Cooper, which is a lovely car. I'm not knocking it, but it's a it's a. But it know, only costs a, fifteen grand. Exactly, it's a you know it's a car for everyday folk. Yeah. Who have fifteen grand? But I mean, it's you know. <laughs> cause, cause, well, compared to a, um, a, um, an Aston Martin or exactly. a, or a Mercedes or a yeah. BMW. So are there things that you spend your money on that you like? Are there material things that bring you pleasure as well as? Yeah, I would say the only thing that I spend my money on is art. Yeah. Yeah, that is like an indulgence. I don't really need it, but it, I love it. And, you know, it's expensive. And you used to, I know you used to buy it tomorrow at Lempica, is that right? Yeah, I have. And Harper. Frida Kahlo. Yeah. Are other people you buy now, is there new artists? Well, I actually haven't bought any paintings lately because I feel guilty buying them. So, but... I have paintings from the past. I have Picassos and Matisse's wow. and Dali's and wow. things like that. And where do you keep and them? And if you become my friend, then you could come over and see them. Even if I don't become your friend, can I come <laughs> over and see them? I mean, I'd like to become your friend, but no, with, that must be lovely. And you have them on display in, in your house, presumably, yeah. one of your houses? Yeah, in my houses. What a nice environment for your children to grow up in. Yeah, they don't really care. Don't they? No. <laughs> They're more interested in scribbling on the wall right well, now. Well, as long as they don't scribble on the Picasso, you're okay. Yeah, they're but hopefully they're <laughs> absorbing something through that. I mean, just being surrounded by things like that would be nice. Yeah, I think so. I mean, my daughter's more interested in other things, to tell well, you the So truth. how old is your daughter now? She's uh, six, going on 16. She's six. Well, she, she's a beautiful little girl, yeah. and your son is a very handsome little fella. I'm, I'm always struck, whenever I see photographs of you together, how she looks like a shrunk version of you. 
and he looks like a miniaturised version of Guy Ritchie. He it's does. almost like they've been cloned or something. <laughs> and I'm not sure I suspect foul play. <laughs> <laughs> We bio-engineered our children. Well, we had to because we haven't actually met. Let, let's talk about the video for American Life because no. that, that caused a stir. Come on. Because <laughs> you withdrew it, didn't you, quite suddenly? Yes, and I did. I've seen it and I didn't think it was that, you know... Uh, provocative. Uh, provocative or disrespectful. No, no, well, it certainly wasn't meant to be that way. The thing is, is when I came up with the idea for the video, it was last November when I was working on the song, and by the time I finished shooting it, it was a month in post-production, uh, we were at war. And war was in the air when I was, when, when I was making it, but, so, but for me, I wanted to sort of wake people up to the, to the notion, or the idea that, that war isn't something that's far away, it's real, and people suffer, and, and you know, it's a, well, it's just a tragic thing that, that I don't think anybody really wants to happen, so it was a kind of my way of saying, hey, people wake up, this is right around the corner, but then by the time I finished it, the war had broken out, and it seemed kind of in bad taste to release a video where I had footage of people being wounded and injured in wars and buildings being blown up. Like, we'll see enough of that on TV, right? So. You know, I think people would be impressed that you say that because, I, I, and perhaps I, I, I'm mistaken it, but I think some people think of you as someone who, who seeks to be provocative regardless of the cost. I, I was that way. I went through my teenage rebellion in my 30s, to tell you the truth, because when I was a teenager, I was so square and straight and um, well-behaved, and you, you wouldn't even recognize me, really. So that was when, presumably, you were, you were studying <laughs> dance, you were I was. Yourself. I was a yeah. straight-A student, and I, was a, I wanted to be a professional dancer, and, you know, I didn't do, you know, I wouldn't, I refused to take drugs, and, you know, I was a good girl. And you hardly drank on it, did you? No, I didn't start drinking until, actually, until I met Guy Ritchie. No. <laughs> He's a bad influence on you. <laughs> it's been a wonderful influence on me. And do you get drunk with him now? I mean, do you actually? I do, yeah. yeah? yeah and do. What, what, what kind of a drunk are you? I've become one of those English drunken girls. That <laughs> <laughs> we love the fact yeah, that you've yeah, yeah, now yeah. become a, a British slag. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? All it, takes, all it takes is a half of a half of a pint. So a little bit of booze. Well, yeah. You're a good cheap date. Then. I am a cheap date, yeah. You don't have to take me anywhere fancy. 
Well, I didn't intend to, just my okay. dressing room. <laughs> so when was the last time you were drunk? When was the last time you really tied one on? A couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. Any special occasion or? And we went to the dog and dark in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go something like that, I mean, presumably people recognise you. I they wear flat caps, so keep you... them down low, and I say, pint and a half for Timothy Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> And you wear, I noticed you wear, you've got, you've got a lot of tracksuits. I do. How many tracksuits you got? Like 30. Well, that's, that's... But only because they keep sending them to me. <laughs> See, I'll be honest with you, it's not the most flattering garment.